how often do you respond to the question of how are you with the standard thoughtless great thanks and you transactional impersonal forgettable if you want to create an impactful feeling of positivity then instead try questions like what are you most looking forward to this week or what did you most enjoy about the weekend Firstly, you'll take that person by surprise because it'll disrupt them from automatically responding to actually thinking about an answer. Secondly, when you skew a person's thinking towards the positive, it draws them into the domain of positive empathy, which is felt in the supramarginal gyrus of the brain. This is the state that gets people feeling more open to sharing and being more connected, helping you to learn more about your team and their drivers. If you're Filipino, but you don't like Filipino food and you don't know how to speak Tagalog, then I still respect you, my guy. I'm not gonna hate you for something that you didn't like to eat and for something that you didn't practice. I'm better than that, and it's okay. You guys thought I was gonna be toxic, huh? Have the courage to open up. When you're courageous enough to be open with others, like sharing your struggles or when things don't work out, you come across as more human and relatable. And this disclosure in turn encourages others to reciprocate by also opening up, which is actually why psychologists call it disclosure reciprocity. It's basically the adult version of, I'll tell you my secret if you tell me yours. And it builds trust, empathy, and intimacy, and goes to the core of connection, which is really important in the workplace. And get this, neuroimaging studies have found that when people share personal stories, their brains can actually become temporally coupled, which means that you're on exactly the same wavelength. In other words, your brains are connected too. Where the hell have you been? It's three o'clock in the morning. I've been playing poker with some blokes. Playing poker with some blokes? You can pack your bags and go. So can you sweat your heart? This ain't our fucking house anymore. Another really useful connection hack is to be genuinely curious and listen more than you speak. Harvard research tells us that people love talking about themselves because, quite simply, it feels good. Self-disclosure triggers the brain's mesolimbic dopamine reward pathway and delivers a powerful neurological buzz. So by encouraging others to talk more about themselves, you're actually giving them the opportunity to enjoy feel-good chemicals. And if you ever find yourself struggling to be curious, look for areas of common mutual interest and explore these together. Commonality drives empathy, inspires rapport, increases engagement, and promotes collaboration. Of course, you also want to make a genuine effort to actually listen to what they're saying, making them feel important and valued. A wise man once told me to never argue with another person until I could argue in favor of their position better than they could. And that's on Warren Buffett. Stay strong. Yeah. Confident. Well, I'm from a pretty confident guy, but confidence comes from practice. Okay? I'm not a confident skateboarder. I'm not, because I haven't practiced skating a lot. I'm not a confident, um, um, let's say, tennis player, because I haven't played tennis a lot. <clears throat> Confidence comes from you doing something over and over and over again, and it becomes so secondhand and easy to you that you can do it just like riding a bike. When you first got on a bicycle, it was very, very challenging. Now that you've ridden a bike for a long time, you can just hop on it and go. I have money on my shoes because that's the path. Time is money. I have different currencies hanging around with me of money. I see money. Money on my mind. My money is sweet. I talk to the money. And most of all, I see 2020 of money. And what's behind me? How I make my money.